Welcome to Living the Ancestral Way with Abana. Today we're going to talk about Oriza Gleberima, the indigenous African red rice. So, there are two main rice that are cultivated in the world. We have the Oriza sativa, that is the indigenous Asian rice from China, and then we have Oriza Gleberima, the indigenous African red rice domesticated in Mali about 3,500 years ago or more. It's grown in Niger, Senegal, Ghana, Togo, Nigeria, Zanzibar, Zimbabwe, and other African countries. What makes Oriza Gleberima such an incredible crop? One, it's pest resistant, it's drought resistant, it's disease resistant, it can grow in any soil condition, whether it's high in iron or iron deficiency, and it can also grow in any climate condition. So, in the late 1400s and 1500s, when Portuguese sailors first arrived in West Africa, they noticed an intensive rice farming system. The technology and the skills were impressive. So in the 1500s, Oriza Gleberima was taken to Brazil and it was first grown and cultivated there. And then in the 1700s, it was also taken to South Carolina where it was grown, it was cultivated. But then eventually the Oriza sativa, the indigenous Asian rice, took over. The reason why the Oriza sativa, the white rice, is more popular than the Gleberima is that one, it's said to have more yield, right? And two, it's said to be easier to mill. What I love about the Oriza Gleberima is the Jola women in South Senegal that have been growing here for thousands of years. They have an intensive seed saving system. They have long distance networks between women and between villages where they're able to preserve different varieties of the Oriza Gleberima. Just by looking at the brown of the rice, they can tell what variety it is. They can also tell how many rice is in one spikelet. They can tell just by looking at the panicle of the rice. Even ecologically, when the rice is on the field, they can tell the variety of the rice. And now that they're growing more Oriza sativa than Gleberima, they're still able to tell the differences. Another interesting thing about Oriza Gleberima is that it's grown in Suriname in South America by African descent people. So the Maroons that were able to, that rebelled, fought for their freedoms, went deep in the forest of Suriname and they took the seeds of Oriza Gleberima with them so they could grow, they can eat it, they, be, they could still be connected to their cultural and ancestral African roots and they still grow Gleberima and use it not just to eat, but in a lot of cultural traditional practices. For me, what I love about Gleberima is that it's the food for the future. It is the crop for the future. One, it's a crop that is pest resistant, right? It's a crop that is disease resistant. It's also a crop that is nutrient dense. It is delicious. A little goes a long way. It's filling, it's heavy. And so the farmers that grow Oriza Gleberima and Oriza Sativa, they actually consume the Gleberima at home and then they sell the sativa on a commercial platform, right? They sell that one and say, but they eat this one. I can't wait to take you with me to the rice fields so we can meet the incredible farmers that are growing and preserving Oriza Gleberima. Thank you for joining me today on Living the Ancestral Way with Abana.